So I guess my question is, what do you want to, what have you heard and what do you want to find out about chat GPT today? Because we've got a lot to cover. I'm going to go through a slideshow and then I'm also going to do it live for you. And one of the functions is not working today, apparently. So that'll make today fun. Is it legal for it to write my listing remarks? Is, is it legal for it to write your listing remarks? We'll talk. It is, and we will talk about that and plagiarism and SEO and all of that. What else? I, well, I mean, I use it, but just like all the different things you can use it for, I think people don't necessarily know how robust it is. We are only going to scratch the surface yeah. in everything that it does. So today we'll, we'll talk about listing comments. We'll talk about your Google My Business. We'll talk about um, blogs. Um, uh, what we have, we have, we have a pretty long list for just an hour. So um, we'll, we'll 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 try to. We need to get everybody in. I mean, may not be who they claim they are. That's kind of fun. I never saw that before. All right. Who hopped in? All right. So um, what I want to start out with is just basically, oh, I got to get on the right one here. I'm going to share my screen and we will start out with just the basics. Signing up for it and you'll go to... At, at the moment, we'll talk about the free version and the paid version as well. So there's a couple different options at this point. And I think part of the issue I'm having today is because I'm in the free version. So we'll, we'll go over that. All right. So um, I just wanted to talk about the speed of adoption. And this uh, graphic, for those of you who um, went to R4, um, you probably saw this graphic on, on uh, one of the big um on the big screen and it talks about the rate of adoption and it took in order to get to a million users it was three and a half years for netflix two and a half years for airbnb 10 months for facebook five months for spotify two and a half months for instagram 74 days for iphone and five days for chat gpt to reach 1 million users I, I took longer than that um, so I was not in the five day group. So some things to know about it when you sign up. So right now it is a free research preview. Um, they're trying to get feedback in order to improve their system. What a lot of people think is that once they get it improved, then they're going to charge for it. And what you'll see now is there is a free version and they're already offering a paid version. So my guess is the free version will be there, you get frustrated with it, and then you end up, it's it's 20 bucks a month in order to go to the paid version at this time. Not terrible. I mean, if you look over the course of the year, what, 240 for the year? We spend more money on dumber stuff. So um, keep in mind that the information may not always be correct. And I'm gonna switch over and do some live stuff, and it's kind of funny when it's not correct, just saying. Um, they tell you how they collect the data. Um, they go through all kinds of conversations. So um, 2021 is when they when they uploaded all of this text in order to help chat GPT learn how to talk. So really, I mean, it's, it's AI and it's all about conversation. So it is it has learned how to interact and talk. It's not it's not always great at being accurate. So don't share any sensitive information in the conversations that you're having with ChatGPT because they're telling you up front that it's all being monitored and looked at. So some of you may be like, okay, <laughs> what is the best way to kill a husband? Maybe used against you at a later time. Although there would probably be an answer. Um, the system is off optimized for dialogue. So let them know if a particular response is not good or helpful. So with those of you who have used our um, home chat, no, home chat, what is our AI guy? Structurally, oh, yeah. the structurally guy. That's still a little bit 
I think stilted in the conversation, uh, chat GPT is light years past that. So it does integrate with Bing on Microsoft. I'm, everybody's like, Microsoft? <laughs> Bing is around and it's integrated with, with chat GPT. So I don't know how they got connected, but that makes Bing cooler all of a sudden, doesn't it? That it works together with that? Maybe, maybe not. And they work on prompts. I put the word prompt in there more for me as a as a memory tool because you are prompting it with information for what you want it to do. So everything is a prompt. You know, do this, say this, edit this, you know, change this. Let me hide that. Okay, so here's the differences in in what you get. So the free plan is available when demand is low, which cross our fingers for class today that demand is low today. Uh, standard response feed, uh, regular model updates, and then plus 20 bucks a month available even when demand is high, faster response speed, and priority access to new features because they are just constantly moving, changing. And so even you know, when Madison's talking about Facebook, how that changes from day to day, ChatGPT changes more frequently than Facebook. So anything you see today could be different by later this afternoon. So, and, and I just pulled some basic information and this comes right from their website. It predicts feasible responses. So it's it's trying to have a conversation and and make it, try to make sense doesn't mean that it is going to be true. And so it may not always give you accurate or reliable information. And in different spots, it may even give different information. So um, you can ask ChatGPT to complete a task and it may respond as though it has external operating power, but it doesn't. It doesn't talk to your, your, you know, your email system. Um, it, it can't complete um, Complete tasks. It is again all about the the text conversation. So you can ask for information and it can look it up, but it may not be accurate. So you always have to fact check it. It's really fun to look up yourself on here. And one of the things that's not working today is the history, or I would show you what it was when I looked up myself. So it can also confuse or mix up topics. So when I look, when I put in um, um, write a bio for Michelle Kelly, I came back and basically said, we don't know who that is. Um, I'm like, thanks. I actually said, there's a lot of Michelle Kelly's. We don't, we don't know who that is. And so I put in more information. I put in, um, you know, Des Moines area, real estate educator. And so it had glowing things about how fantastic I was, including that I ran my own real estate company, Kelly Real Estate Company. <laughs> so again, make sure that you're reading through the information. And I like the last line in this. It's not a substitute for human judgment, expertise, or responsibility. This, I mean, it's still just a computer. So it's a fascinating and it's innovative tool and it can help you tremendously. Maybe it, and maybe it helps you and maybe it even helps your assistant, but it will, it can set up different tasks for you as well. So some examples of prompts and then we'll get into some. So explain quantum computing in simple terms. Um, and I put in other things for real estate. Um, you know, give me a 10 week program for marketing for real estate. And it will give you week one, week two, week three, week four. It does. And then your history doesn't show. And then I can't show you what it says. So there you go. Um, and we'll go through some of the, the capabilities. It does remember what you said. So if you want to make edits as you go through the conversation, it remembers everything and keeps, keeps taking it down. Um, it allows you to make those follow-up corrections. One of the examples was a listing description where it said, has beautiful mountain views. And so your next line would be, um, 
uh, take out beautiful mountain views and put put in uh, lakeside, and then it would rewrite it using that information. So it it's almost like working with with a real assistant because it's like, yep, you got this right, but now you, we need to fix this. But it can rewrite it in seconds. Apparently, it's trained to decline inappropriate requests. So maybe it wouldn't tell you how to kill a husband. All right. Limitations, it can be incorrect. Um, it could produce harmful instructions or biased content, which that may, that may come up later as a challenge in real estate. And then it has limited knowledge of world events after 2021 because 2021 was when they put all of the information in that they were doing. It doesn't go out and continue to look for it like Google does. Okay, so I will highly recommend this video to you. It is an hour long. Um, it is top five ways to dominate your real estate market with chat GPT. Um, it's by Rachel Adams Lee. I think you sent this to me. Mm -hmm. Um, with Lori Ballin, and she's amazing. Lori Ballin makes buku bucks as an SEO guru. So everything that we talk about will be about your SEO. Oh, nope, didn't want to play that. Nope, sorry. There we go. All right. So the first thing that so many of you are probably going to use this for are listing descriptions. Fun, right? How many get real tired of doing listing descriptions all the time? Like how many times can I say the same words and do all of that? So a couple of little tips and tricks. So I am gonna switch over to live in my new chat over here. And so you could put in an address you could put in the details, you know, three bed, two bath, 1,500 square feet on the golf course, whatever information that you want to do. But a little, a little trick that you can do is I'm going to type in, write a listing. You're going to see how slow I type. Or now I'm going to go over to Zillow because it was previously listed. And I'm going to take the information and we're not going to plagiarize it, but what we are going to do, you have to tell it all that. if we do, it gives it more information. So it, it gets it, it gets it right or it gets it better the first time. Right, and I just did a house I'm listing this week, and it said, sorry, I can't. I don't have real-time access to property listing information. So that's why you copy it and you paste it in. Because, because I did it, we did it once before, didn't we? It came up with, it came up very flowery language. It was like, what? Was, was it prior to 21, maybe, that it? I didn't input anything from Zillow. I just basically gave it, tried a tagline for blah, blah, blah. Address, and, I, Moines, Iowa. Mm -hmm. and I gave it some of the things that yep. great views or this or that. Oh, and so you gave it some information. I gave it some information and it yeah. was really great because it comes up with a lot of great words. And then I was able to also refresh or have it rewrite it. Yes. Resubmit it. Yes. So it pulled this out of Zillow, but it's rewritten. It's not straight plagiarized from Zillow. It is, it's not. So if we looked at, so here's the overview. And then here, here is what ChatGPT wrote. So we could also regenerate the response. We could change it. Let's see. Uh, so if you're going to use it on the MLS, are you going to say within a thousand spaces? But wait, there's more. <laughs> so you can do, um, you can tell it, um, make shorter. Oh, I don't know how to spell. You could pull it from the assessor site. You could it may be an RPR. I, otherwise, you can you can type in your own information. That's just a quick, super quick way that you can grab a ton of info. Now, see how it's the shorter one. Um, from my from my understanding and what I've seen, 
if you say um, do this in a hundred characters or less, or I don't remember, that's agent remarks. How many do we have for a thousand? A thousand characters or less. It usually gets close, but it may not be exact. So, but but it does understand that and gets you pretty close. So that's a nice a nice short one that you can use at this point. Now, sometimes you'll see, now this one is using owner's ensuite. Um, sometimes you'll still see it, see that it will say master bedroom or master bath, and then you can tell it, um, substitute master bedroom for owner's suite, and then it will rewrite it for you for the whole thing. Questions in that? Robots are going to take over the world. They're not. They're not. I mean, we all need to know it, but it's, it's what they put in and what they found out. How the bots were going. Anyway, you have to read it. New York Times, I think it was a week ago. Oh, my goodness. All right. <laughs> don't read it before bed. Yeah, don't read it before bed. Okay, great. That's all right. Okay. So that gives you, I mean, this was all the information that went in there. I pasted it pretty darn quick. I didn't even realize all of that went in there when I pasted it. So it's it's a very cool thing to do. I want to switch back to, I had. Well, the other thing you get to, Michelle, is change the tone. So if you still want mm -hmm. to make it funnier, make it more serious, something like that. Yep. So when we get to, to blog posts, um, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But yes, even in these, you can you can give it a voice. So with the information that you put in that's your own, it can learn your voice. But then you can, you could put in a comedian's name, you could put in, you know, somebody who's sarcastic, have them have, have, write it in that voice as well. All right, I'm going to switch back over to the slideshow. But yes, telling it what edits that you wanna make, um, making it shorter if it's too long for remarks. If it comes back too short, um, you know, expand on Staylorville Lane. And then it will, it would, well, let's do that. And on. Taylorville Lake. <clears throat> oh, it wasn't in my last one. I wonder if it'll. Oh, yeah, Taylorville Lake. Hey, you won't like that one. It doesn't say anything about Polk City. <laughs> well, it is a listing in Ankeny, so. Okay, I'm going to stop gener generating that. Combine with some description. So then it will take that information and put it into the other information that they've already done. Cool. And it does well with misspelling. <laughs> it does. It does. And and that's part of talking talking about blogging is if you write your own blog, you can just copy and paste it in and ask it to check for misspellings, um, grammar. Um, you could ask it how to make it better, how to um, um, how uh, how to make it go viral. There's a lot of a lot of things that you can put into there. All right. So next up, after listing descriptions, is when we get into your Google Your Business profile. So how many of you have your Google My Business profile? Okay, that'll be the first homework for those of you who don't. Um, but there are a ton of Chrome extensions that are available. Um, 
to use with chat GPT. And this, I was fast, like hundreds of them. And I'm going to pull one up that I've used and it's AIPRM.com. And just like with anything, it's available now. It's currently free, but by later this afternoon, who knows? Um, and so I am going to turn that back on in my Google extensions. So it's AIPRM for chat GPT. And this gives a bunch of prompts uh, for, for the program. So now I'm going to refresh it. And so now on the left, you're gonna see that there's more options that I have here. I'm gonna put that there. And so now these are some one-click prompts that we can go to. So if you wanna do Google My Business, we're gonna go into the search and doggone uh, Google Business. I didn't, I tried giving it Google My Business or something too long and it didn't like it. What is this that we're supposed to do? So this is a Google extension that you can add and it's AIPRM and there's a bunch, but this one I found to be really pretty cool. Um, Google Business. Let's see. And optimize your Google business profile is the one that you want to use first. Let me make sure that that's right. Yep, optimize your Google business profile. And so you'll see that if I click on it, no, nope, that's not it. Ah. I must have clicked the wrong spot. Optimize your Google business profile. So now here in this little, this little chat box, say the name of the business, where it's located, what it sells, and anything else that's important. So I'm gonna do, that's real estate school. School, what is, what is it want? Um, <laughs> Real estate education, can't spell. Iowa. Okay. So you'll get the weird merchants magical thing up at the top. And so now what we're going to see are the best categories that we want to use for SEO. So these are tags that we want to use on, on for this one, the Google My Business for the real estate school. So these are all of the words and descriptions that we want to use to maximize SEO. So that anybody who's looking for real estate education, that's what they're going to find when we're using that. Does it spit on hashtags? Um, it doesn't, but you could hashtag most of these. So it's giving you information. It's not doing it. It's, it's not, not doing, doing it yet. It's giving yeah. you what? Right, yeah, this is just to maximize the SEO. So this is a little different piece of it. So that one, I mean, because you're always wondering, it's like, what should I hashtag it? What should I tag it with? Best target keywords for the real estate school. So same for you and very much of what this has been talking about is making sure that you are hyper local that you are mentioning your communities you are mentioning your neighborhoods that you are always um tagging it with those because otherwise you're just a generic agent like everybody else right i'm a real estate agent in des moines okay yeah you and two thousand others or, wait how many do we have Twenty. <laughs> well, there's like five more, you know, real estate agents anyway. But yes, real tours, there are a couple thousand that you need to differentiate yourself. So this is a great place to start. 
is with the the optimization. I know you don't have to chase down Madison, who disappeared apparently. Questions on that one? I need to pop back over. Optimize your Google business profile. And then with this one, it also has, let's see if it will take me back. There is another optimization in there. That is not it. I'd have to go back to that again. That had output in English. Does it translate it for you if you wanted? Um, apparently, it works for multiple, multiple languages. So you can you can request it in different languages. Uh, trying to get to the spot where we can do this again. Uh, let's see. Now, write a profile for conceptual K school. Don't we look cool? So for those of you who may struggle writing a profile about yourself, you can put in some key information. You could grab your, um, you know, the profile that you have on LinkedIn or on your website and put it in, add a few more details, and it can really, well, you know, let's see. Add in Illinois for education. So now it'll rewrite it and add Illinois into it. <laughs> there you go. I'm so sorry. I didn't know. And so now we'll go in because we've given it more information. Cool? Yes? Knowledge is power. Okay. Questions? Will you use it so far? Now, since it's free? Questions, but I'm not sure if we're there yet. If, if we're there yet? Okay. All right. So the next place that I want to go to after your Google My Business profile, um, blog content and ideas. So with this, we kind of need to talk about, is it, can you just take it directly from here and post it? You can. Um, previously, Terms of Service said that you couldn't use AI um, for a lot of the social media sites. Now what they're saying is, we don't care where you get your content as long as it is helpful and human edited. So a lot of that, I, and that may be what some of the, when you get shut down is if they think it's not human edited if they think it's strictly ai um, you can get shut down so that's why you need to make sure that you, that it's helpful and human edited were the the two um the two words that they kept using repeatedly for that um and part of that is once it writes it add in links add in images add in video and now all of a sudden you have personalized it and made it your own. So you, I mean, can you just take it straight from what comes up? Y yeah. Um, is it basically generic and what everybody else is going to get? Yeah. So will it perform very well as far as SEO? No. So the little bit of tweaking that you get in there is huge. Because what's the hardest part of writing a blog? The writing, the idea. It's starting. <laughs> You're, the ideas you're okay with, it's the actual writing, or is it? Sometimes I don't make it now. Oh, well, there's that. There's that. So let's go back over, and we could do, uh, let's see, blog ideas. So how does, like, how do it know, 
Like, how did the internet gods know that it's giving the editing other than like adding in those personal touches? I think it needed a misspelling in it to be <laughs> human. Well, it really, it's because if it's too generic, it, it looks as though it is, it is, yeah, a bot generated. So, I mean, that makes a difference. And that's how I got this back. So if you click on new chat when you're ready to change uh, what you're working on, you want the next one you want to go to is the uh, da, 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 the recommended one is I think it's the create five Google business profile Q and A's instantly. I think is the next one that you want to go to. But these will all give you prompts and give you information that you can use for your blog or for your Google My Business profile. So now if you're thinking about blogging, um, let's do ideas for, let's do 10 ideas. 10 ideas for real estate agents. Oh, this is just, idea. I didn't put in blog ideas. So I could do stop generating, stop generating. I've also put in um, what are the top 10 things a new agent should do. And it gave a, a very detailed list. I'm gonna edit. Blog ideas and now. I just can't spell today. See, it understands my craziness, the way I type. So here you go, five tips for first time home buyers, the benefits of buying versus renting, 10 up and coming neighborhoods to watch, how to stage your home for a quick sale, understanding the home inspection process, top five mistakes to avoid when selling your home. All right. And the neighborhoods up and coming in Des Moines. Mm -hmm. the up now it would probably struggle to find that because that now you're looking for information so you're going to have to feed it that information but let's start first with what does fair housing say about a computer deciding a good neighborhood rich uh, <laughs> there you go well if there's a just remember that disclaimer at the very beginning the disclaimer said that it it, it could potentially do that be problematic. So that's where that human editing comes in. Um, which title is most likely to go viral? And what should come back is it's, it talks about the various factors, but it should tell us which one that they think would perform the best. So apparently I don't tell it the right information. <laughs> yep. Which title? Let's edit. Which number? Which? Is well, this an independent county or part of Google? This is, and it, it, they're not part of Google. They are independent, I believe. I think Google released their AI version today. Did they? Well, it's interesting that there are so many Google extensions that work with it. So, I mean, there's that piece of it as well. The above titles is most likely to go viral. So, I mean, it's ever evolving, ever changing, um, certainly. Now let's see if it will give us different information. There we go. The future of real estate, predictions for the next five years could potentially be the most interesting one or most likely to go viral. So let's try what was our what was the topic the neighborhoods? Let's see expand on let's see what it says. And on number three. 
David mentions ours, we got East Village. Truman Hill is a great neighborhood. It may. Mine did say though that my knowledge cut off is it's twenty twenty one. So this one didn't didn't specify. But you didn't specify an area, did you? Did you put in an area when you did yours? You yeah. just said up and coming neighborhood. I yeah. Or some of the up and coming neighborhoods because you put Des Moines area. Yeah. That's like East Village, Human Health, right? Beaverdale is urban there. Let's edit for Des Moines area. Go backwards, not forwards. Yeah, I mean, predict the future. It's not going to go. It can. It has history. It does, and and it's his, and it's really history prior to, to 2021. So, yeah, it gives it gives you a good start um, as to what you can do. You could put in um, add information for break neighborhood in Des Moines. So this is where you're going to want to read through. Let's have our proofreader back there and tell us how much of it is true and how much of it is not true. Because there could be um, misinformation in there. What do you think? How's our proofreader? So far, so good. So far, so good. It's a little worried. Yeah, it is actually even the seven point nine percent is pretty accurate, surprisingly. Nice. Uh, email that to him so he can use it. <laughs> we send that. We'll send that over to you. It's all in your head. GPT is right here. I'm here to learn about Matt Knight and Kit. I'm actually the so, I mean, this would be great information to put on your website if you are marketing to a neighborhood. I mean, there, there are so many applications for this. You know, take different neighborhoods, and if your blog is, I'm going to go through all the neighborhoods in the Des Moines area, um, you could have them pretty much pre written and pre scheduled all at the same time with just a little bit of research. But again, you have to make sure. That you've got that human editing and that it's true because it may not be true all right so let's go to well let me see if there's anything else in that one um so the blog if if you do just take it straight the way it is again the the seo is not going to work as well but the other thing you can do and we mentioned it briefly is if you have written it yourself you can copy and paste it into here and you could ask it what would make this more interesting and it could make your writing better or you know again we've got grammarly and we've got spell check for the most part but it's really that you know what what could i add to uh, make this uh, more interesting for readers or what what would gain more interest where should i expand and it will do that. Or if I need to make it shorter, we've already we've already seen how to do that as well. Isn't that cool? All right. Do you use Quillbot too? Use. So a guy from our team, he says once you do here, mm -hmm. you copy and paste that, and then you have to put it in Quillbot because then it does something to it. So then it's originally posted. So that's probably another extension that you can use to make it appear that you're not copying it from another one. I don't I'm not familiar with Quillbot. AI checking AI. So I think yeah. it's the SEO. Yeah, it's something with the SEO. I forgot about it until you show us that you wrote it yourself pretty much. 
Okay. Well, How do you? Since Madison is perfect on all these descriptions that they do, have you seen any improvement to? Uh, is that yes. <laughs> but that's a that's a heavy load to put on her right there. That that is a lot. So how do you spell pull back? Okay. But how do you spell it for the group? Q U I L L B O T. Okay. So quill like writing. Okay. So that's another one to check into. Like I said, there there are hundreds now of of um, extensions that you can use for chat GPT depending on what it is that you want to accomplish. So that sounds like a good one to use. Uh, next up. And we talked about how to continue with elaborate on certain things. We did that in the listing agreement already. Uh, the next one is videos to be the local expert. So we know videos are tough. We also know that videos are very, very important, but sometimes it's hard to get started, right? On I'm gonna put that in slideshow so you can see it a little bit better. Um, so we can ask it for topic ideas for videos, you know, best. Uh, best video topics for real estate agents in Des Moines. Um, you could do something like 50 things you don't know about Des Moines neighborhoods. Of course, you need to fact check everything. Uh, we talked a little about, bit about train it to use your voice or someone else's. But um, one of the things that I love about this is you can also ask it to do a video script for you. So it's like, okay, so I'm gonna, it told me that I need to do a video about this. Let's do, let's do 10 titles uh, for real estate agents for Des Moines neighborhoods and see what we get. Oh, I need to start a new chat again so it forgets what I'm doing. Now, usually on the left hand side, you can see the history. So each of these chats that I've done, you can go back and look at it. Unfortunately, apparently in the free version today, it's not working. So that that's the uh, downside of being in free. All right, so um, 10 titles for videos for Des Moines real estate agents. And again, free version. Boy, it is a little slow. Do you know what GPT stands for? I did not look that up. Mm. There we go. Discover the best neighborhood. What is it? Generated pre trained. Generated pre trained. Oh, interesting. Discover the best neighborhoods in Des Moines for your clients. That one sounds sketchy to me. <laughs> Maximizing your commission, tips for selling high-end Des Moines properties. Because this didn't say just for marketing. How to stage a home, real estate investing, navigating the Des Moines housing market, a guide for agents, attracting millennial buyers to Des Moines what you need to know. All right, so let's start with um, create a script for number one video. I don't know if you know the answer. I don't know if I might be jumping ahead, but like, do we foresee like legal issues over like for, like intellectual property and like down the road? Because let's say you you have this generated script, you do a video, it goes viral, and all of a sudden you start you start getting money coming in mm -hmm. because you're big on social media. Yeah. 
but you didn't write it and now but there could now because there's ai checking ai so i saw something that came up across these where somebody wrote their thesis paper well they didn't write it right chat gpt wrote it right and so but the professor used ai to check whether ai wrote it or not and they determined it did yeah so like how do i mean maybe we're not there yet with this but like i think i think it's too new to to know how that's going to shake out i mean programs like this allow you to use it but again if you have you have multiple people putting in the same prompts you're probably going to get very generic very similar information so that's that's where i think it's going to be really important to make sure human editing and helpful yeah definitely change like two words around okay do something Okay, so how do you like this though? It has your opening shot, it has your narr your narrator voiceover in all of that, cut to the shot of the real estate agent speaking with clients, another narrator voiceover. I mean, this is your script. I mean, creepy, but real cool. Because how many times are you like, I, my videos could be better. Right. And it wouldn't just have to be on this topic. It could be, you know, how do I make, I'm, I'm thinking back to your, we can't call them Taco Tuesday. What, what did you end up calling them? Yeah. Cause that's trademark. Yeah. Tuesday Taco Adventure. Yeah. The yeah. Tuesday Taco Adventures or, you know, a, a, you know, a food, a food blog, basically what, what script do I need to follow? What shots do I need to get? It would absolutely tell you, um, or, you know, putting in, putting in the transcript of that, how could I improve this? And it can tell you that much more. I know it's just very smart and it's just going to keep going on and on and on about how to do that. Maybe I should have put in a number of minutes for how long that this video was going to go, but we can do stop generating on this as well. All right. So the next one, I think we're getting to the end of it. Videos to be the local expert. And then uh, reels and call to action. So with those, again, videos always rank higher. And so we want to make sure that um, that we're comfortable with those. And the goal is always to stop the scroll. So using really good titles so that as people are scrolling through things, they're going to stop and take a peek at it. And so you could even you could even ask chat GPT. Um, I'm, what what is a dynamic title or what is what is a title that will stop someone um, for this topic? And you can get lots of different topic or title ideas. All right. Questions? More questions? No, like, I, I'm just so many things. No, just, like, like, I always like to think like two to three steps ahead because like you know, people start doing like videos and reels and whatnot, and then all of a sudden checks start coming in from sponsors and this, that, and the other. And then, mm -hmm. like, who owns Chat GPT? And are they going to start coming after people and be like, oh, by the way, part of that money's mine because this was our property? Well, and I think so that's, that's what we have to. Seven pages of terms, exactly what will happen. Probably, I think. I think that's what we have to be careful of because right now it said it is just learning what it can do it's looking at everything that people are using it for it's probably looking for a way to monetize it so i i think that's something that we have to be aware of um but at the moment it is it is free to use yeah human editing make it helpful are those two big things i mean this doesn't even scratch the surface of everything that you can do with it, but does this give you a handful of things that that might make your life a little bit easier? Might you know up your game a little bit as far as what what you're putting out there online? No, totally, and I appreciate uh, you doing this so fast and quick. It's amazing that you know you're right on it. So I appreciate that. And more to come. I mean, there's just there's so much. And what we talked about today, again, could be different by this afternoon. So um, the one thing I that I always want to leave you with is, you know, we always worry that technology is going to replace us as agents. 
And technology will not replace agents, but agents who don't embrace technology will be replaced. So whether it's, whether it's this or something else, I mean, we just have to embrace it and, and use it. So that's what I have for you. Um, jump in, um, use the free version of it while you can, check out the extensions and just make it things a little bit better for you. Make a list, start with just like the top two things you liked. Don't start with 15. Um, or ask chat GPT, what are the first two things that I should do? And it will tell you. What, we can, we can ask it, but I don't. What, we'll, we'll see, we'll ask it. Michelle. Yes. What was the thing that you typed in to get your Google profile set up? Um, that was the. It was after you added the extension, but then what was. Uh, let me go back to that. It, sure. it is, it's the AIPRM.com, and you want to search for the Google business in the far right. In the prompts, Google business Yep, for the prompts. And then optimize your Google business profile. And so let's see what the in, end game. It doesn't say what, it just says what an end game is. It's not going to tell us. Or Pat GPT. Does anybody online have any questions? <laughs> nope. All right, friends. We're good to go. There you go. It can only respond. All right. Thanks, friends.